Thanks for joining us on Rethink with Reed. I'm Reed Kilmer. In today's interview, we're going to cover the topic wine. I love wine, I just don't know that much about it. So when I go to the store, I just look for my favorite kind, find one that's decently priced with a cool label, and that's about it. That's all I know. So I looked for some answers and wanted to know what should I be looking for when I'm buying it in the grocery store? And do they really work that well when you pair them with food? Are American wines that much different than global wines and local wines? What's the difference between the ones in Nebraska? So today you're going to meet Kelly Simpson, the tasting room manager at Soaring Wings Vineyard. You're going to get an answer to a lot of these different questions and a lot more information. So stick with us. Kelly, I really appreciate you having us out to Soaring Wings Winery and Brewery. Uh, do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself, how you got into the industry? Sure. Um, I've been with Soaring Wings Vineyard for the past five years. I started off as a server and then I escalated to tasting room manager in 2013. And, um, 14, 2014. Uh, I escalated to tasting room manager in 2014 and um, I got involved actually through my sister. Um, she was looking for servers and um, she hired me. It's a very family oriented place out here. Um, the daughter was the tasting room manager in between my sister being the tasting room manager and me being the tasting room manager. Um, and it's, it's just a great place to work for. Interesting. So have you always been kind of a wine kind of sewer, trying different things and then this worked out or what? Uh, I was a pastry chef actually for a little while. Oh. Yeah, I went to London to become a pastry chef. When I moved back, there weren't any pastry chef jobs. <laughs> so I, I started off as a server and then I got a job and kept on as a server part time. And then um, when I didn't want to be a pastry chef anymore, Sharon asked me if I wanted to be the tasting room manager. So. Perfect. And you, have you tried everything here? Yes. So you're well versed in all kinds of wine? I'm well versed in all kinds of wine. Perfect. Okay. Not just ours. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. So tell me a little bit about wine. Like what kind of misconceptions are there out there? The different, there's so many different kinds to try. There's so many different kinds to try. Um, I think one of the main um, struggles we, we battle each day is people think you can't make good wine in Nebraska. You can. You just have to use different varietals. So you won't find those um, those Chardonnays or the Cabs. You'll find La Crosses and Chambersons. So the different varietals don't have as much clout as the traditional varietals do. Um, but they're they're still great and they taste good um, and they make great wine. It's just they're engineered to withstand this weather instead of the ones that need the nice weather to grow. So when, if someone's a very like novice at drinking wine, can yeah. you explain a little bit of the variety? I mean, we're going from cabs to whites and kind of what the palate would like for a certain kind of person? Yeah, so when you come out here for a tasting, we always recommend starting with the driest you'd like to try, work your way to the sweetest you'd like to try. And we include that you'd like to try because some people don't want to try the dries. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, they want to try the sweetest we've got, which is Vignole. Um, and we, we love those benchmark names. So our closest to Moscato is Vignole. Our closest to a Chardonnay is the La Crosse. Our closest to a Riesling is the Ice Falcon. So we can bridge those for people who come in and who are novices and say, I don't really know, I kind of like a uh, Riesling. Mm. I've got the Ice Falcon for you. So that's what we're start your tasting off with. Um, and as long as you can tell me what you like, we can figure out what wine you like here. Okay, so what if you don't know what you like? I mean, did you try everything or do you kind of try to pinpoint certain things? Typically, I, I run through a list of questions and we know what by the end what you, you will sort of like. So if you don't drink much wine, what do you like to drink? Mm -hmm. um, and if you say sodas, I'm typically going to go on the sweeter side of things because Sweeter, sodas are sweeter. Oh, okay. Um, so stick to the sweeter side of things. If you say you like whiskeys, typically you like things aged in oak, so you like the drier mm, things. Okay. So it's it's based on what you like. I know what to serve you. So you're like a wine investigator trying to figure yeah, out little things. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people know exactly like 
give me a chamber sign, but sometimes I have to do a little bit of mystery work. Mm, okay. So let's say we're in a store. What kind of things should we look out for? Or if, even if we're buying wine here, all of the different things on the label. Um, um, well, I know a lot of people who just buy wine for the label. Sure. They're like, I like Guilty that artwork. That. <laughs> I like that artwork. I'm going to take it home with me. So if that's your style, you continue with that. Uh, I don't have anything against that. I've done it myself plenty of times, but typically there's indicators that will tell you the qualities that the wine has. So like our bottles will say um, if they're dry or not. And they'll say the percentage of grape varietals, which I mean, sometimes you're not used to the grape varietals, so you don't know that the Chamberson has characteristic of cherry and the um, lacrosse has a strong um, white peach note. So okay. you wouldn't know that the blend would have that. Yeah. So it, it sometimes it's gibberish to you. Yeah. And that's totally okay. Um, <laughs> sort of the fun part. Of that's kind of the fun it. part of things. Yeah. Um, so typically there's, there's regions or grape varietals that'll tell you which way it'll go. Um, and if you know that knowledge, that's great for you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you're, you're looking at another language. So I say if you prefer the bottle label, go for it. Or in all of those stores, there's somebody there to help you. So ask them to translate. Yeah, never be afraid to ask for some never, help. Never, never, I mean, I'm, I never look at anyone funny because they don't know what a Chamberson grape is. <laughs> and I think if you don't know what a specific region in France is, it should be just the same. So. So when we're trying to buy different bottles of wine, we have like the $10 bottles of wine and then the very expensive. Is it really worth buying the expensive one or where's that kind of gap go off? There's definitely a plateau. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not a Somme, so I couldn't tell you exactly where that plateau uh -huh. is. Um, but it's, it's definitely there. And I think typically for me, I'm in that $10 bottle. <laughs> yep. I'd be right, um, right there with you. And ours are, are range from 16 to 22. So it's, it's really close to that range. Uh -huh. Um, nothing too outlandish on our menu. Um, ooh, our Captain Jim's airport one, but yep. that's a fortified wine and it's 22% alcohol content. So. So when you say it's four or five, bit. that means? Um, it's, it's had alcohol added back into it. So we sent out one of our grapes to make a brandy, and then we added it back to our wine. Oh. So it's a, a hard liquor added back to our wine. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's delicious, <laughs> but potent. Yeah. So it's got a higher price tag. Probably don't need two or three glasses. Maybe no, one might just maybe, do the job. Maybe one just does the job. I don't know. I'm not judging. If you need right. three, yeah. you need three. Something work. <laughs> So when somebody comes into the store and you're trying to pair some food with the wine, what kind of things should we know as a consumer and then what types of things are you trying to pair with? Um, again, know what you like. Mm -hmm. Don't get a Chamberson just because it's a dry wine and dry wine goes with steak. Mm. Just because it's steak doesn't mean it needs a dry wine. If you don't like a dry wine, you won't like a dry wine with a steak. Yeah. Um, so have a red wine that goes with a steak that's a little bit sweeter, okay. um, which we've got two of. We've mm. got our Dragon's Red and our Cardinal Red. Um, or if you're drink, eating spicier food, you typically want to drink something a little sweeter to balance off that spice. Um, if you're pairing with sweet things, you typically want to go sweet as sweet or sweeter to balance out that sweetness level. So are certain wines good during certain part, parts of the year? Are they seasonal wines at all? Is that a thing? Definitely. Seasonal wines are definitely a thing. Rosés just had their season. Okay. Summer is the season of rosé, um, which we have our Falco Red and we used to have our Hummingbird as well. It sold out during that season. Oh. Shocking. Go figure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we're getting into the colder months, the red wines will take their, their place because typically during the colder months, you don't want a chilled wine. Mm, okay. I mean, I'm not speaking for any, everyone. Um, you can still drink a chilled wine. But typically, let's but say like you're going to like a holiday party, you're like, I don't know what everybody likes. You would want to bring? Um, middle of the road wine, where it's not too sweet, not too dry, semi-dry typically, um, room temperature. Because oh, okay. you don't know how long it's going to sit out on the table. Sure.
Okay. So tell me a little bit about Nebraska grapes and wine and why those are so much different than, say, California or Italy. Yeah. Um, we primarily have French American hybrid grapes here. So we, they've been engineered to withstand this weather. And then um, we grow them here, which is different soil. So okay. the Norton is the great, great grape of Missouri, but we grow Norton in Nebraska, and the flavor profiles will be different. Hmm. So the soil and the grape varietals are really what the flavor profile depends on. Um, so most of those hybrids will be very strong in flavor. They'll have very strong characteristics, like the Chamberson has that, that cherry, the Norton has citrus and black pepper, but in Missouri it's got, the Norton has much stronger black pepper at the forward and that citrus at the finish. Oh. Nebraska is citrus at the forward, black pepper at the finish. So. Wow, so there's yeah. just little subtle things. Those little subtle things. Um, I was actually talking to our winemaker last night and she mm. called it the wine matrix. She was like, if you change this, then this changes and this changes and this changes. So each time you, you deal with the wine matrix, you, it changes the output. Wow, wow, okay. So there's a lot of different flavors, no matter if you're going dry, dark, wherever it's from. Yes. Now, I have to say, Soaring Wings does have the best dry red, red wine section. Oh, okay, so, calling it out. I'm calling All it right, out. so now everyone has to come try I'm, it. I'm calling <laughs> it out. We have the best dry section in Nebraska. So. And why do you say that? Is it because of the soil or how you guys take care of the grapes? or? Um, our winemaker. I mean, Jim used to be our winemaker and now Aaron's our winemaker. Mm -hmm. And he just made that a priority. He wanted to have a great dry red wine section. So he made it a priority and he did it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So if you set a glass of wine down, say someone, is it okay to grab it by the stem or can you grab it by the cup? I mean, is it, is it proper to do a certain way? Um, I mean, you hold your glass however you feel comfortable holding your okay. glass again. But typically you don't want to hold it by the, the bowl because that'll heat the wine. Mm. Your hand will give it warmth, which will, will make the wine warmer than you want it to be. So you typically hold it by the stem or by the... Um, the bottom thing, the bottom that glass thing, thing. yeah. <laughs> if I was a son, I would know that. <laughs> but yes, the, the bottom part. Okay. Um, whichever you're comfortable with. I've seen people be like, oh, I think I'm going to break it. And I'm like, hold it by the, the, the glass then. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be fancy and break it. Right, yeah. Enjoy your glass of wine. That, that'll be worse for you than the warm wine will. <laughs> exactly. So. So should you try to smell it first, let it sit there for a couple minutes? Yes, typically um, you want to swirl it so that the aromas are higher up. Okay. So you're, you, can, you can have that aroma easily when you get it out of the glass. Um, and then typically you want to take two sips before you really start to um, assess the wine because that first sip is a palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. And the second sip is when you can actually taste the wine itself. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So as you're eating, should you drink water before you go back to your wine? Or is it okay to just go straight for the wine? It's okay to go straight for the okay. wine. Typically, you're not doing a tasting during dinner mm -hmm. um, unless it's a wine pairing. And then the person pairing it with dinner has already thought about how that wine tastes with that food. Oh, okay. Yeah. A lot of people, they, they say, how do I do this right? And I'm like, you drink the wine. <laughs> that's how you do it, right? That's, that's the most important part is that the wine gets consumed and it's what you like. So as long as you know what you like and can say, I like this or I don't like this, that's the important bit. Because saying meh doesn't really help me out with what to serve you next. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So how many different wines do you guys have available here? Um, we have 22 different wines available. Wow. Yeah. That's a ton. So uh, what, an equal amount of reds and whites and then rosés or? Yes. Approximately. Okay. Yeah. So anybody, if they like whites or reds, could come here and have quite a different things to choose from. Definitely. And as I was walking up, it's beautiful here. Tons of acres. How many, how big is this? 10.5 acres of grapes. Wow. And that's actually not enough for all of our wines. So we contract out... Um, 40% to other Nebraska growers. So 60% we grow ourselves on the 10.5 acres of grapes, and then the other 40% we have to contract out. Oh, okay. So you guys got plenty of stuff out here to make plenty of wine. Yes, yes. 
Um, and we call for volunteer pickers. If anybody wants to be on our picker list, oh. we can. Yeah, each summer we call for volunteer pickers. You get lunch and a bottle of wine. That's not a bad deal. No. Yeah, sign right up. Uh, so Kelly, anything else you would like to add about wine or what you enjoy about it or just the industry itself? Um, like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's such a vast field. There's so many different regions and so many different types that it's, it's really fun to go and try a lot of different things in the places that they're made. So trying a Nebraska wine in Nebraska is great. Um, if you can travel to France and try the wine there too, that that's great too. <laughs> um, but it typically, if you go into a wine shop, there's always someone there to help you through that. When just logistical nightmare of looking at a bottle and going, I don't know where that is. <laughs> so always asking questions and because there's the wine world, you can you can know one varietal and that's just scraping the surface. Ah. There's just just a, a wealth of information here, and it, there's so much to learn. And if you just want to know which one you like, mm -hmm. that's great. Or if you want to know everything about the different varietals, that's great, too. So. Okay. And we were just saying, my favorites are cabs, and you like cabs quite a bit, too. Uh, away from the winery, is there a certain brand you like or ones from certain kinds of countries that you tend to gravitate toward? Um, I love uh, Groot Rosé. It's a sparkling rosé um, that's made by Groot. Um, it's delicious, and you can get it at Corkscrew. I'm sure my boss won't be very happy with me for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, that's but, part of the fun, right? Going around and trying different things. Yeah. Because if you're not willing to be open to try, then you maybe not make it all the way out here since we're yeah. all the way in Springfield. So yeah. it's part of, the, part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And there's, I mean, there's so many great wine shops now, um, whatever part of Omaha you're in or mm -hmm. ever, whatever part of Lincoln you're in. I'm not as well versed in the Lincoln wine shops, okay. but if you Google wine shop near me, there's probably at least three in a 20 minute drive. So. Yeah. Well, perfect. That's all I have for you, Kelly. Thank you so much for perfect. educating us on wine and telling us a little bit about what we need to look out for. No problem. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the interview, please subscribe, leave some feedback in the comments below. And if there's a topic you want me to cover or somebody that you'd like me to interview, just contact me and we'll see what we can do. Thanks.